and welcome to this episode of Women in Engineering, Success Stories from STEM Professionals. Joining us today is Lisa A. DeGeronimo, PE, a Senior Vice President at PSNS LLC, who is known for her outstanding expertise in civil engineering and land development. We will talk about her experiences as a woman in engineering, discuss some of her notable projects and insights on mentorship, inclusivity, and future of women in engineering. I am your host, Tiffany Tichi, a senior mechanical engineer, STEM advocate, TEDx international speaker, and an international recognized author of children's books, including What Can I Be? STEM Careers Made to Z, a STEM Crew Kids Adventure Series. I'm also the host of Read It Right Radio Show on WDRB Media, owner of Thrive Edge Publishing, as well as owner publishing consultant of Inspired Authors Publishing. And with that, let's jump right into today's episode. Now it's time to jump right into the main segment of our episode. Today, I have with me Lisa D. Girolamo. Lisa, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yes, we're excited to have you with the Women in Engineering podcast. So we'll jump right into it. Can you talk to us a bit more about your journey up to date and how you came to choose engineering as your career and what inspired you? with it well i going back way 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 back uh, obviously i was always a very good student um but my love really was for math and sciences um and the math and sciences are just a natural um pathway into engineering when i went into engineering though it wasn't a very common thing for women to do it was actually very uncommon for women to enter the engineering industry um, but one of my inspirations was actually my, my grandmother. My grandmother, uh, she was blind uh, ever since I knew her, and she never let anything get in her way. Um, she would, she put aside the fact that she was blind and you know, she said, well, let me drive a car. You know, Grandma, you can't do that. But, <laughs> but she was always of the opinion that you, you could do it. Um, it didn't matter, you know, what the uh, obstacles were in your way, you, you could achieve that. So she was probably the person that, you know, influenced me and, and kind of gave me that determination to be able to, to do it. Um, I, you know, obviously applied to engineering school. I got into engineering school. That was a hurdle. And it was difficult, challenging, uh, studied a lot. Um, <laughs> you had to, you had to kind of be better to, to get through school, but graduated, graduated uh, near the top of my class. And um, my first job was with a um, roadway design company, uh, McGuire Group, and they um, were designing a third lane widening to 287. So I spent the first nine years of my career designing roadway widening. And part of that was designing culverts, uh, increasing the size of the culverts and what I found there was a real passion for hydrology and hydraulics, water flow. I'm just, I find it fascinating. <laughs> I like to watch a flood. I don't like to be in it, but I like to watch. <laughs> um, so um, that really pushed me into that hydrology, hydraulics piece of the puzzle. And it got to a point where I just, I needed another challenge. And that's when I uh, came to PSNS and got more into site development, which, uh, required a bit more creativity uh, than a roadway design. And I was very, you know, very challenged by it. And I got the opportunity to work on a lot of projects that really, you know, spoke to my passion in hydrology and hydraulics. So, you know, I started at PSNS uh, quite a few years ago as a project engineer. And now here I am a uh, senior vice president of their um, site civil division. So it's it's been a challenging road, but, uh, it's exciting. It's uh, it's exciting to look back. Love it. I mean, I love how you said you was challenged into it. And that's another thing when I decided to go into engineering, I said I wanted to be challenged. And so when you said, OK, I want to take on another test and be able to be challenged. And now you represent as a VP. I mean, your story is amazing and you're re definitely representing for other women. Um as far as the field itself and the, your journey. So thank you for that. And as we've spoken about the whole women in male dominated fields, <laughs> what are some of the unique challenges you've encountered <laughs> along your career path? Because I know I've had some. So talk to us, share, share what were some unique challenges. <laughs> it, 
obviously it was more challenging when I first started my career. It was just, um, women just didn't do it. Um, you weren't expected to, to be part of the conversation. So just trying to gain acceptance was, was interesting in the beginning. Um, there was, there was a contingent, uh, where it was, it was just business as usual. And there were others who would raise an eyebrow, so to speak. Um, I think my, the funniest story that I remember, um, I was working for a very large company and, um, very, very corporate. Everything was very business-like, uh, large meetings. And, um, I was in the meeting and it was all men, you know, it was 20, probably 20 people. I was the only woman in the room and, uh, somebody, uh, a woman walks in late and, uh, she says, good morning, gentlemen. <laughs> And I was the only woman in the room. Afterwards, she comes up to me and she apologizes to me. She goes, I have never walked into a meeting and seen another woman. It, it's wonderful to see you. And I apologize for saying gentlemen. <laughs> it, that's, um, that's a great, yeah, that's a great example. It's like the norm of thinking that's the norm. And it's like, right. it even it's it's interesting you said that because you're used to the guys don't then to hear it from a female. So the other female is like, wow. So that is definitely a unique challenge that you'd be able to share. <laughs> but let's talk about the whole, on the flip side, what are some advantages of being a woman in engineering? One of, one of the uh, greatest advantages is, um, I think, or that I have found is you are dealing mostly with men and men have a more difficult time really getting into a heated discussion with you. It tends to calm down a situation. Um, and in fact, on uh, more than one occasion, men have said to me, it's like, I can't argue with you. I can't, <laughs> I can't have this fight with a woman. I'm like, that's okay. You know, we could talk about it and we could figure out an answer. <laughs> Um, and the other, the other thing is, um, again, this was more in the, in the early parts of my career. It doesn't happen quite so much now is, um, being underestimated. Um, sometimes you could take offense to that. I never did. I took advantage of it. Um, and it really, it's, it, it's powerful and it's empowering when somebody underestimates you, you really, you, you automatically have the upper hand. Um, so that's, for me, that that's also been something that's been very helpful at times. <laughs> I love it. That is great perspective because I'm, and it does, I guess, as you say, with growth, you said at the earlier stages, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to get adjusted to that, but it's like the fact that you said you taking it, to, you turned it into flipping it from, okay, they underestimate me, but I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity. And I love how right. you flipped it, flipped the switch. Cause me, I'm just like, I'm going to let them know, <laughs> but you right. have to be cognizant. And I love how you did that. So I'm, Hey, I'm taking notes from you as well. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> can you talk about any mentors or role models who have influenced your engineering career? Um, what, an interesting role model um, that I had along the way was actually a client of mine. Um, we have a lot of mentors along the way who kind of teach us, you know, the ropes relative to the technical pieces of the puzzle, but he stands out because he really taught me a very different part of engineering. It's not just the technical, it's how you handle yourself within, uh, an, uh, within an environment, within a political environment, um, within a large corporation. How do you express things? How do you get your point across? Also, presentation and and how you deliver a product has a tremendous impact on what we do it you know you put your best foot forward and if your best foot forward at first glance doesn't jump at you that that doesn't that doesn't uh that doesn't take us anywhere so he really taught me kind of the the finer points um of being an engineer not the technical piece but more of the uh collaborative um Social, maybe not even social, but um, just a very different perspective of being a good engineer and being, a, you know, a good consultant to our clients. I love that. I mean, that's key. Now, have you heard of sponsors? I'm going to go ahead and flip it to mentors and sponsors and, you know, the ones that vouch for you. Have you had that experience where, you know, you got your mentor who gives advice, but as far as sponsors, maybe somebody who spoke on your behalf in the room, um, have you ever dealt with that as well? Anything? Yeah, 
it, yes, definitely. Um, that probably ha happened more uh, internally. Um, you know, like your boss, you know, introduces you and, and says, um, you know, Lisa has done this a, a dozen times. She'll be able to take you through the entire process. Um, she'll be a great support. Um, so, so definitely. And I think that's part of how I, you know, I grew in my career as well to, you know, achieve what I have achieved is for those, uh, you know, those supervisors or people uh, even within the company just, yeah, promoting you, so to speak. Um, and, and that's actually a really good feeling because, you know, when, when they're promoting you to somebody else, it's one thing to, to say something behind closed doors, but when they, they say it out front, it's, um, it's, it's, it's nice. Yes, yes, definitely. Now let's talk about, can you share any details of specific projects you're particularly proud of in your career and what made it stand out for you? Well, I, I call it my baby. It is the daylighting of the Sawmill River in Yonkers, New York. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Yonkers, but it is definitely a city. It's a very urban environment. Um, and right in the middle of downtown at the train station, there was a parking lot. And under that parking lot was a pipe. Uh, it was an arch um, that had been buried for more than a hundred years uh, that carried the river under the parking lot and out to the Hudson River. And we opened it, we daylighted it. Um, it was 2000 CFS, which is a tremendous amount of flow. Uh, we curtailed that flow and we created a beautiful park where a uh, parking lot had been previously. The, um, the waterway was uh, daylighted. We had various different uh, points of interest along the way. We had two ponds or pools, we had riffles. Uh, we incorporated a fish ladder. Um, there was a lot, it, it was, it, it was very, uh, very satisfying from an environmental perspective as well. Um, it had a lot of benefits to the community, not only to give them a, a space, um, it was a passive park, but it gave them a space to congregate and enjoy the river and, and the trees and the grass, particularly in the middle of the city. Um, and the project's been celebrated um, by a number of different um, uh, like ASCE, and actually it was in National Geographic recently as well. Um, so it was it was a tremendous challenge to control that water and allow the public to get close to it. Um, the interaction of that kind of water and the public can be a little tenuous at times, um, but we were able to do that and allow the people to really enjoy it. Um, it was, um, I, th I think that's probably through the end of my career, I'm not sure I'll have the opportunity to do something so creative and provide such a benefit to the public. Wow, that's amazing. And you said it made it to G National Geographic. I mean, yes. obviously, it's in um, <laughs> American Society of Civil Engineers. You know, we put these acronyms in here, so I have to spell them out for everybody. Uh, but you said also it made it to that as far as contributions from there. Yes. So that's awesome. Um, talk to us, you know, how does this project reflect your contributions in the field, um, as well as the impact of women in engineering in general? I, I think this particular project kind um, shows how we can undo things. Um, you know, an engineer put the parking lot there to begin with, but an engineer can can take that and create this beautiful environment um, and bring it back to a natural condition. So I think the fact that we can understand hydrology and hydraulics to the point where we can recreate or try to recreate what Mother Nature had had in, in a particular point um, is just, it's to me, it's just, you know that that's what I love. That's that's where that's where my passion lies. Um, it was a great opportunity to do that, and I think from an engineering perspective, the ability to recreate rivers, particularly these days when we're trying to improve water quality and, and quality of life, um, that accomplishment, you know, hopefully can be repeated in in a lot of places. Right, and I think you've you know the model has been set, so it shows an example for it. So I love how you said, hopefully, it can be repeated. So that's a good thing that you said that. Um, talk to us about, in your opinion, what steps can organizations take to create more inclusive and diverse environments for women in engineering? 
um, I think we've come a long way. I think we've come a tremendous uh, way since I started in the business. Um, but I do think there's there's things that we can continue to do because I still see um, women don't go into engineering still far as much as I'd like to see. Um, I was probably one in 10 uh, in my en entering into engineering school. Now I think it's probably more in the 30% range. I'd like to see that be 50%. <laughs> so I think we have to, um, number one, it would be great if organizations encouraged young women before they got to the workplace to accept the challenge of the math and the sciences and support that and, and participate in that. Um, and then, you know, once we once we get to that point where where we are in the business world, you still need um, mentoring and support. Um, and a lot of companies have done that, not all, but I think that that's a great program also is to, to give women a, a place to discuss things um, and, and get some get some good feedback. Uh, talk to people who've been there. You know, how did you handle this um, at this particular point? Um, or, you know, where do I take this from here? Uh, those support groups and that mentoring, I think, is really important. Yeah, I love how you say that, the support groups. Have, do y'all have affinity groups or, uh, you know, the employee resource groups? And I know we have it with ours as far as the women um, side of things. I don't know if, you know, it's, that's another thing as far as organizations having those type of uh, support groups. <laughs> well. Right, yeah, a lot of organizations do. And I know, you know, PSNS uh, had one probably prior to COVID, kind of fell apart. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but that's a definitely key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so talk about any strategies or insights that can, you, you know, you could share with other women looking to excel in engineering. I think um, the biggest thing is be determined. Um, don't let the little road bumps get in your way. It is a difficult, it's a difficult career and there are challenges along the way. Um, engineering is a manner of taking basically the sciences, you know, all these, all those equations that we learned and all of the natural sciences and putting them to the benefit of people. There really is no direct answer sometimes. Um, so you really have to be determined to, to get there. Um, you are, you are going to, again, hit those speed bumps and falter, but do not give up. The other thing I would say is kind of silly, but uh, as a woman engineer, always keep a pair of boots and a hard hat and a vest in your trunk. <laughs> I have uh, in my career gone to meetings in a nice, uh, nice pair of pants and some high heels and been asked to go out in the field afterwards. And the fact that I had that in my car was priceless. <laughs> That's um, key. That's, I love it. <laughs> That's good. Yes, yes. And then um, sometimes as engineers, we're afraid to ask questions. And sometimes again, as a woman in, in a male, man's uh, male dominated field, we tend to be a little shy about asking questions. We tend to be a little shy about challenging things. And you really, as an engineer, you have to question, you have to challenge things. You have to put things out there. You can't be afraid to do that. Um, it's a very, engineering is a very collaborative uh, and people play off of other ideas. Um, sometimes one person will have an idea and you'd be like, ah, that could never work. And at the end of the day, once 10 other people put their thoughts into it, you have a very creative, successful solution. So, you know, don't, don't let the fact that there's, you know, mostly men in the room keep you from challenging uh, and questioning. That's it. That's it. And I was telling someone else as far as how engineers think, trust, but verify. And so when you said having the okay. question and attitude, that's always something that we always have to consider. So I love how you put that out there as far as the whole question and making sure you ask those questions, especially as women in engineering. Right. Um, so how do you envision the future for women in engineering? Uh, like I said, I'd love to see it get to 50-50. <laughs> and I do. I think it's an incredibly bright future. Um when women really have a different perspective 
um, on a lot of things. And particularly when, you know, it comes to engineering and, you know, engineering those things that we encounter on a daily basis, whether, you know, it be a building or a parking lot or a park, our perception, our different look at things gives it a gives it a different angle. It, it really explores some different opportunities. Um, so I really see women having a great impact on a lot of things and getting to that 50%. I'd really like to see that. <laughs> That's right. I love it. That's awesome. I love it. Lisa, you've been amazing. I, I think we've been able to take notes. Um, you've dropped some gems and I'm just thankful for you being able to share your knowledge and wisdom. Is there any way, you know, is there any way that, is anybody, how they can go about getting in touch with you? Um, can you share, you know, how can they get in touch with you further if you had any, you know, ways to get in touch with you? Oh, uh, an email address. Um, or LinkedIn or either way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and I'm definitely on LinkedIn. Okay. Sounds good. Good. So y'all make sure you touch bases with Lisa. She's been amazing. And one more thing. Do you have a favorite motto or a quote that maybe, you know, that you might live by or would like to share? <laughs> uh, recently, I was having a conversation with actually another successful woman, and we were talking about um, being un in uncomfortable situations. And what we came out with was you have to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. That is it. I love it. I mean, the fact that, you know, we are in these uncomfortable situations, but you got to be able to adapt and be adjust to it. So I love that quote. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Lisa, for being such a great guest. Uh, we appreciate you greatly. Thank you very much. This was great. Thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you won't miss our upcoming episode featuring interviews with inspiring women engineers, discussions about industry trends, and much more. Go to womenandengineeringpodcast.com where you will find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during today's episode. Until next time, may your engineering endeavors be as remarkable as the women who stories we are sharing. Stay curious, keep innovating, and engineer a better future.